This week, we're going to continue talking about the Laplace transform. First, we'll do a little bit of revision because we haven't had a lesson for two weeks. And then we'll introduce the idea of step functions. Why are we studying the Laplace transform in our differential equations course? Because the Laplace transform makes derivatives disappear. The Laplace transform of the derivative of a function is s multiplied by the Laplace transform of that function minus the function at the point zero. And we also have formulae for the second derivative of f, the third derivative of f, or the n derivative of f. We can use these to solve initial value problems like this. For example, use the Laplace transform to solve y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y is equal to cos t, y of 0 is equal to 0, y prime is 0. What we do is we take the Laplace transform of the differential equation. The Laplace transform of y double prime minus three times the Laplace transform of y prime plus two times the Laplace transform of y is equal to the Laplace transform of cos t because the Laplace transform is a linear operator. And then we use the formula from the previous theorem to replace the Laplace transform of y double prime by this green bracket and the Laplace transform of y prime by this orange bracket. This problem has zero initial conditions, so we can forget about y of zero and y prime of zero. We end up with s squared minus 3s plus 2, capital Y is equal to s divided by s squared plus 1. Divide both sides by s squared minus 3s plus 2, and then factorize. We can see that we have y is s divided by s squared plus 1, s minus 2, s minus 1. We need to use partial fractions to split this up into three easier functions. It's going to be something over s squared plus 1 plus something over s minus 2 plus something over s minus 1. Because s squared plus 2 is a second degree polynomial, the something on the top must be a first degree polynomial, always one less. Because s minus 2 and s minus 1 are first degree polynomials, on the top we would have a zero degree polynomial. A zero degree polynomial is just a constant. Put everything over the same denominator, and then I'm going to leave it for you to check that constants must be 1 over 10, minus 3 over 10, 2 over 5, minus a half. So capital Y must be 1 over 10 S, minus 3 over 10, over S squared plus 1, plus 2 over 5, S minus 2, minus a half over S minus 1. Let's split this up some more. We're going to split this up as 1 over 10 multiplied by s over s squared plus 1, because s over s squared plus 1 is on our table of elementary Laplace transforms, minus 3 over 10, 1 over s squared plus 1. Again, 1 over s squared plus 1 we can find on our table, plus 2 over 5, 1 over s minus 2, this function we can find on our table, minus a half, 1 over s minus 1, because this is on our table. Looking at our table of elementary plus transforms, s over s squared plus 1 is the same as the Laplace transform cos t, 1 over s squared plus 1 is the same as the Laplace transform sine t, 1 over s minus 2 is the same as the Laplace transform e to the power of 2t, and 1 over s minus 1 is the same as the Laplace transform of e to the power of t. And then we've pretty much finished. As soon as we know capital Y is a linear combination of Laplace transforms of simple functions, we can write down the solution to the initial value problem. The solution is small y 
is one of the ten cos t minus three of the ten sine t plus two of the five e to the power t minus a half e to the power t. Let's do another example. Use the Laplace transform to solve y double prime plus 2y prime plus y is equal to 4 e to the power minus t with the initial conditions y of 0 is 2, y prime of 0 is equal to minus 1. What we do is we start with the differential equation and we apply the Laplace transform to each term. Then we're going to use our formulae for the derivative of y and the second derivative of y. First of all, we can replace the, the Laplace transform of the derivative of y, of y prime, by sy minus y of zero. And I want to look at this orange term. With the plus transform of y double prime, we can replace by s squared capital Y minus sy of zero minus y prime of zero. We need to put the initial conditions in. Instead of y zero, we replace this by two. Instead of y prime of zero, we're going to replace this by minus one. There we go. Let's rearrange the left hand side to move all of the capital Y terms together. There we go. And then minus 2s plus 1 minus 4, I'm going to move over to the right side. We can continue to simplify this. The right hand side I want to put over, sorry, I want to factorize s squared plus 2s plus 1, and then I want to divide both sides by this. This is just s plus 1 squared, and then divide both sides by s plus 1 squared. We end up with our formula. Capital Y is 2S squared plus 5S plus 7 divided by S plus 1 cubed. And I leave this for you to double check. If capital Y is equal to this function, then small y must be the inverse Laplace transform of this function. To calculate this inverse Laplace transform, we need to use partial fractions. I'm going to leave it for you to check that if we use partial fractions on this function, we're going to get a over s plus 1 plus b over s plus 1 squared plus c over s plus 1 cubed, where a is 2, b is 1, and c is 4. For the time being, just assume that that's true. You can check this later. We need to take the inverse of plus transform of this function. I'm breaking it up like this. 2 times 1 over s plus 1. 1 over s plus 1, this is on our table of elementary Laplace transforms. 1 over s plus 1 squared, we can find there. But 1 divided by s plus 1 cubed is not there. But what is on the table is 2 divided, 2 over s plus 1 cubed. So instead of taking 4 out of the bracket, I'm just going to take 1, 2 out of the bracket and leave the other 2 inside the bracket. If you look on our table of elementary Laplace transforms, we can see that the Laplace transform of e to the power minus t is 1 over s plus 1. We can see that the Laplace transform of t e to the power minus t is 
1 over s plus 1 squared. And we find that the Laplace transform of t squared e to the power minus t is 2 over s plus 1 cubed. And these are the functions that we have. So as we know that, we can write down the solution to the initial value problem. We've said that the solution to the initial value problem is the inverse Laplace transform of this function, or splitting it up, it's two times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1, which we know is e to the power minus t, plus 1 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 squared, which we've said is t e to the power minus t, plus 2 times the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s plus 1 cubed, which we've seen is t squared e to the power minus t. So the solution to this problem is 2t squared plus t plus 2 multiplied by e to the power minus t. And I can show you a graph of this function. That should all have been revision for you. The main topic for today's lesson is the idea of step. The unit step function is the function which looks like this. It's a function which is equal to zero between zero and c, and then it jumps up and it's equal to one, for all t greater than or equal to c. And we might be asked, for example, to draw the graph of one minus uc. Well, the first of graph is zero, so it's going to be one minus zero or one. And then the graph is equal to one. We're going to have one minus one or zero. So it's going to look like this. First one minus zero and then one minus one. Draw the graph of y is equal to u1t minus u2t. Now it's two step functions combined. Clearly, t equal to 1 and t equal to 2 are going to be important points because we have a 1 just here and we have a 2 just here. So we're going to split our domain into three smaller sub intervals. We're going to be looking at the function between 0 and 1. We're going to be looking to see what happens between 1 and 2 and then what happens between 2 and infinity. We're going to be looking at the function, which we could write like this. It's u1 minus u2, for t between 0 and 1. And then we're going to look at u1 minus u2, for t between 1 and 2. And then finally, we'll look at again, u1 minus u2, but now for t bigger than 2. First, let's look at u1. Put the graph of u on the top. On the first part, u1 is equal to 0. On the second part, u1 is equal to 1. And on the third part, u1 is equal to 1. So we're going to have a 0 here, a 1 here, and a 1 just here. There we are. Next, I want to look at u2. Now I've put the graph of u2 at the top. On the first, Interval, the function is equal to 0, then it's equal to 0, and then it's equal to 1. So we're going to have a 0, a 1, and a 1. Our function is equal to 0 minus 0, which of course is 0, then it's equal to 1 minus 0, which is 1, and then it's equal to 1 minus 1, or 0. We were asked to draw the graph of this function. It's now straightforward. 
the graph is equal to zero, then it's equal to one, and then it's equal to zero. Let's go a little bit more advanced. Write the function f in terms of the unit step function. We have a function which is equal to 2, if t is between 0 and 4. Then the function is equal to 5, if t is, equal to, if t is between 4 and 7. The function is equal to minus 1, if t is between 7 and 9. And then the function is equal to 1, if t is greater than or equal to 9. Here's a graph of this function. We're going to be looking at each of these four pieces separately. First of all, let's look at the first piece. The first piece is 2. The function starts at 2. So we're expecting that our function is going to be 2 plus something. And the something will describe the, the second, third and fourth parts of the function. Now let's move on to looking at the second part of the function. What happens when we get to 4? When we get to 4, the function goes up. It goes up from 2 to 5. It goes up from 3. So we're going to have plus 3. And to show that this happens at 4, we have u4 here. So far, we know that our function is going to be 2 plus 3u4, because it jumps up at 4, and then plus something to describe what happens later. We move on to the third part. The function goes down 6 at 7. It goes from 5 to minus 1, so it goes down 6. So now we can add on minus 6 u7 minus 6 because it goes down 6 u7 because the change happens at t equal to 7. we still haven't finished yet we still have plus something on the end what happens at 9 at 9 we go from minus 1 to 1 at 9 we go up 2 we're going to be adding plus 2 u9 and then the function stays like this all of the way to infinity. So then we finish the function. Another function. Write this function in terms of the unit set function. The function is equal to t, then it's equal to t minus 1, then it's equal to t minus 2, and then it's equal to 0. Here's a graph of the function. function we can do. Yes, different notations. Sometimes people write u subscript 4 of t. Some people might like to write u of t minus 4 or some people use h or some people use theta. In this course um, and Use notation from the recommended textbook, we're going to use use subscript for. This function has four pieces. First, it's equal to y equal to t, and then we do a jump. We jump to a different piece of the function. We jump to y is equal to t minus 1. At 2, we're going to do another jump. We're going to jump down to y is equal to t minus 2. When we get to t equal to 3, we're going to do another jump. We're going to jump down to y equal to 0. The function starts with the function equal to t, and it's going to change or jump t equal to 1, t equal to 2, t equal to 3. So we're expecting the function to look like this. We know that we start with t. There's a change at 1, so it's going to be something multiplied by u1. 
there's going to be a change of 2, so something multiplied by u2. And then for the final change, we're going to have something multiplied by u3. What's happening in our, each of these jumps? For each one of these jumps, we're going to calculate that the jump is the function on the right minus the function on the left. What happens at the first jump? The first jump, the function on the right is t minus 1, and the function on the left is t. So we're going to be calculating t minus 1 on the right minus t on the left, and that's equal to just minus 1. At the second jump, the function on the right is t minus 2, and the function on the left is t minus 1. So the second jump is minus 1. We go down one. That makes sense. At the third jump, the function on the right is zero. The function on the left is t minus two. So it's going to be zero minus t minus two. The third jump is going to be two minus t. Now we can put these in. We start at t, at 1, we go down 1, so minus u1. At 2, we go down 1, but the shape of the function is the same, so just minus u2. At u3, we don't just go down, but the function changes. We're not just going down 1 and then keeping the same type of function. We're going down and we're changing the type of the function. So at 3, we're doing plus 2 minus t u3. One more example. Write the function f of t is equal to t squared and then 4 and then 4 e to the power of t minus 3 in terms of the unit step function. Here is a graph of this function. This is actually a continuous function, just because of the way I've chosen the numbers. But still, the function is changing its behavior at 2 and at 3. So still, I'm using the same, the, the same um, terminology. I'm still saying that it has a jump at 2, and it still has a jump at 3. It has a change or a jump at these points. We're starting at t squared. There's a change or a jump at 2, so it's going to be plus something u2. And then there's another change or another jump at 3. So it's going to be something u3. What happens at the first jump? The first jump, we have 4 on the right and t squared on the left. So 4 minus t squared here. What happens at the second jump? 4e to the power of 3 minus t on the right, 4 on the left. Put these in, and we'll finish the question. That's all very well. This is a chapter about the Laplace transform. So we should be asking, what is the Laplace transform of the unit step function? I've put the formula for the v Laplace transform at the top, just to remind you. The Laplace transform of a function f is integral from 0 to infinity, e to the power of minus st, f of t dt. Using this, we can calculate the Laplace transform of the unit step function. Now, remember, the unit step function is the function which is equal to 0, and then it's equal to 1, the change happening at c. We could have the function equal to 0 first, between 0 and c, and then the function is equal to 1, between c and infinity. But of course, if we integrate 0, we just get 0. So we can forget about the first one. Really, all we're doing is we're calculating the integral from c to infinity of e to the power of minus st dt. And you know how to do this. I can just tell you that this integral is e to the power of minus cs divided by s. 
This is an important formula, so let's write this as a theorem. The Laplace transform of the unit step function is e to the power of minus cs divided by s. Next idea. Now let's suppose we have some function, any function. I've drawn a wiggly line, but we could draw any function just here. And let's suppose we want to take this function and I want to pull it to the right by C. In other words, I want to pull it to a new function called G. And the gap, I'm just going to fill in with zero. More precisely, I'm going to define a new function g, which is equal to f at t minus c, as long as t is greater than equal to c. And on the left part, the new part, we're just going to define g is equal to 0. We could write this in terms of the unit step function. We could write that g of t is u c of t, f at t minus c, because the function starts at 0. And then there's a change at c, so it's going to be something you see. And the change is going from 0 to f of t minus. OK, but what is the class transform of g? Let's calculate this. We want the class transform u c f of t minus c. So we're going to start calculating the integral from 0 to infinity. e to the power minus s t, u c t, f of t minus c. And remember, the unit step function is either equal to 0 or it's equal to 1. And if we integrate 0, we just get 0. So we're not worried about the first part. We're only interested in the integral from c to infinity, where the unit step function is equal to 1. We need to do a substitution to calculate this integral. I'm going to do the substitution. u is equal to t minus c. Then, of course, du dt is equal, du is equal to dt, and t is equal to c if and only if u is equal to 0. So when we do our substitution, we get the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the power minus s, u plus c, because t is the same as u plus c, f of u, d. Now, here, c is a constant. Inside the integral, s is a constant. We can take this outside of the integral. We can take e to the power minus cs outside of the integral and leave e to the power minus su inside. But look what we have here. The integral from 0 to infinity, e to the power minus su, f of u, d. This should look familiar to you, because this is just with a plus transform of f. This is an important idea. Again, let's write this as a theorem. The Laplace transform of u c, f of t minus c, is equal to e to the power minus cs multiplied by the Laplace transform of small f. We're going to be using this formula, which I, I'm going to refer to as a shifting formula, when we solve initial value problems. For example, uh, sorry, next example. Find the Laplace transform of this function. This is a function that we've looked at before. It's the, it's the function where the graph looks like this. We've already written this function in terms of the unit step function. 
we've previously found that this function can be written as t minus u1 minus u2 plus 2 minus t minus t. For our purposes, I want to write this as t minus u1 minus u2 minus u3 minus u3 t minus 3. Now, what have I done here? Why have I split the final term up into two? It's because I want to use the formula at the top, the formula we've just found. In the formula at the top, these two numbers must be the same. If we have u3, then inside the function we must have t minus 3. So just to have these two numbers the same, I've split the final term up into two terms. Then we can write down the Laplace transform of this function. The Laplace transform t we know is 1 over s squared, so I skip over that. We know the Laplace transform u1, u2, and u3, e to the minus s over s, e to the minus 2s over s, e to the minus 3s over s. So that just leaves us the final term. The Laplace transform of u3, t minus 3. And we use the formula at the top. It's going to be the Laplace transform, of, so it's going to be e to the power minus 3s multiplied by the Laplace transform, and instead of t minus 3, we have the, the Laplace transform of t, which is equal to 1 over s squared. So we have e to the power minus 3s over s squared. Next example, find the Laplace transform of f of t, which is equal to sine t, t is between 0 and pi over 4, and is equal to sine t plus cos t minus pi over 4, if t is greater than pi over 4. The first thing to do is to write this function in terms of the unit step function. Note that we can write f as sine t plus a function because go back. There's always a sine t at the start, so it's sine t plus something. It's plus a function which is equal to zero to start with, and then it's equal to cos. But this is just the same as u pi over four multiplied by cos. So the Laplace transform of f is going to be the Laplace transform of sine t plus the Laplace transform of u pi over 4 cos t minus pi over 4. And look, we have the same number, pi over 4 here and pi over 4 here. So we can use the formula at the top in gray. This is the same as the plus transform sine plus e to the power minus pi s over 4, the plus transform of cos. We know the plus transform sine, we know the plus transform of cos. We know that we have 1 over s squared plus 1 plus e to the power minus pi s over 4, s over s squared. And that's how we solve a problem like this. We can also use this formula to find inverse Laplace transforms. For example, find the inverse Laplace transform of 1 minus e to the power minus 2s over s squared. 
and the cavitation periods like this. First of all, I want to split this function into two. I have a one over s squared, and I have e to the power minus two s over s squared. I'm going to look at these two separately. The inverse pass charts of one over s squared, that's easy, you know that's just a t. Let's look at the second one. We have an inverse pass transform of an exponential function multiplied by another function. We're going to have unit step function multiplied by something. Because there's a 2 here, it's going to be u2. And then we're interested in the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared. But we're going to calculate this function at t minus 2. The inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared is just t, so we're calculating the function t at t minus 2. So we just get t minus 2. And if we wanted to, instead of writing this in terms of the step function, we could write this as the function equal to t if t is between 0 and 2, and then the function is equal to 2 if t is greater than equal to 2. What if we have e to the power of ct multiplied by f of t? What is the Laplace transform of this function. We do this the same way. We put this function into our formula for, into our definition of the, the Laplace transform. And we can see that we almost exactly have the formula for the inverse, for the B Laplace transform F. Except instead of s, we have s minus c here. So in fact, we just have v Laplace transform of f calculated at s minus c instead of at s. This is an important formula. We're going to be using this next week. So let's write this as a formula. Let's write this as a theorem. The Laplace transform of e to the power of ct f of t is capital F s minus c. This is another formula which you will find on your table of elementary Laplace transforms. I've written this at the top. We're going to use it now. Find the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared minus 4s plus 5. In the past, when we've tried to find inverse Laplace transforms of rational functions like this, we've used partial fractions. But we're not going to do that this time because the roots of s squared minus 4s plus are complex numbers. So we're going to use a different technique. We're going to complete square of the denominator. s squared minus 4s plus 5 is the same as s minus 2 squared and then plus whichever numbers we have left over, in this case plus 1. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because if, if we wrote down that capital F was 1 over s squared plus 1, then we have f at s minus 2. If we know the inverse Laplace transform of capital F, then we can use the formula at the top of the page to calculate the inverse Laplace transform of capital G. What is the inverse plus transform of capital F? That's a straightforward one. That's one of the elementary ones. That's just sine t. So in the formula at the top, small f is equal to sine t. So 
So small g, that's the inverse of the Laplace transfer of capital G. We want the inverse of the Laplace transfer of capital F of S minus 2 from the formula at the top. That's e to the power of 2t inverse of the Laplace transfer of capital F e to the power of 2t sine t. How do we find the inverse of class transforming of a rational function like this, where the denominator is a quadratic function? We need to ask, what are the roots of the denominator? And does it have roots in the real numbers? If the answer is yes, then we're going to use partial fractions. We factorize the denominator and then we use partial fractions. That's the technique that we started using last week and we've used earlier today. If the roots are not real numbers, if the roots are complex numbers, then the technique we're going to use is we're going to complete the square and then we're going to use the sh this shifting formula, one of the two shifting formulas. I have two examples before I finish this week. First, the first of the final two examples, find the inverse Laplace transform of 30s plus 440 divided by s squared plus 32s plus 240. We need to find the roots of the denominator and I'm just going to tell you the roots of the denominator are minus 12 and minus 20. Because these are both real numbers, the technique that we want to use is the technique of partial fractions. I'm just going to tell you that using partial fractions, we can write this function as 10 over s plus 12 plus 20 over s plus 20. Um, last term when I taught this example, I taught this example on the 10th of December 2020. That's the only reason that the numbers here are 10, 12, 20, 20. I'm going to leave this example for you to finish. Final example, I think, of today's lesson. Find the inverse Laplace transform of 10s plus 12 divided by s squared plus 40s plus 420. First thing we do is we look at the roots of the denominator. And I can tell you that the roots of the denominator are minus 20 plus or minus 2i root 5. These are complex numbers, so we're not going to use partial fractions. Instead, we're going to be completing the square and then using one of the shifting formula. I'm going to leave it for you to check that capital G can be written as 10s plus 12 over s plus 20 squared plus 20. And again, the numbers are in green just, be, just, just to because last time I taught this, I taught this on the 10th of December 2020. Now, we want to split this up. I want to split this up into two smaller functions. And I'm choosing to split them up like this. 10 multiplied by s over s plus 20 squared plus 20. OK. This is a function which you can find something similar to this on our table of elementary class transforms. The second one, I'm not taking 
12 out, I'm taking 12 divided by 20 out, and I'm leaving a factor of 20 inside the bracket because I want the same number on the top and on the bottom. Um, I said, is that right? I think that might be a mistake. Let's, let's go on. Yeah, there's, there's a typo here. It should be square root. I'll mention that later. If we define two new functions, if we define capital F is S over S squared plus 20, then we have F at S plus 20 just here. If I define capital H as 20 divided by S squared plus 20, then in the second bracket, we have capital H of S plus 20. Now, here's where there's a mistake. It's true that the inverse of that stress with capital F is cos root 20 t, but the mistake I made here is that the inverse of that stress with capital H is actually root 20 multiplied by sine root 20. So what I should have done is I should have done square root just here and square root just here. I will um, I'll fix that later today and upload the correct size. For the time being, just ignore that mistake. Using the shifting formula, we need to calculate we need to write down the inverse of plus transfer of capital F at S plus 20 and the inverse of plus transfer of capital H at S plus 20. We have e to the power of minus 20t multiplied by the inverse of plus transfer of capital F and e to the power of minus 20t multiplied by the inverse of plus transfer of capital H. So we have and put the correction in. 10 e to the power of minus 20t cos root 20t plus 12 over root 20 e to the power of minus 20t sine root 20t. And that is the end of this week's lesson. Next week, there's no lesson. Two weeks later, we're going to be finishing our chapter on um, the Laplace transform. Next week's lesson is going to be one of the harder lessons, so I'm not putting too much material in. You might find that next week I finish in only 30 or 40 minutes, but it would be a more difficult 30 or 40 minutes. Do you have any questions? Yes, well, I think we're going to stick with 2020-16 unless 
I'm told otherwise. There was, at the start of the term, there was an idea that we might have classroom final exams and therefore that would that would increase to 70 or more. But because we're, we're almost certainly going to stay with online exams, I think we can stay with 2020, 60. 